Wickedness is real. Oppression is real. But more real is our victory. For this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God has commissioned Bishop David Oyedipo to preach the word of faith, liberating men everywhere from all oppressions of the devil. Get set for an empowerment that will enable you to rule in the midst of your enemies and subdue them under your feet. Now, Bishop David Oyedipo. In Jesus' precious name, my body is your sanctuary. Lift up the hands and sing it together. My body is your sanctuary. is you. Let the last straw that will break the camel's back, that will break the back of sin, be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's my pleasure to welcome everyone to this great service this morning. You are returning home with joy and gladness. God will position you for continuous victory. By today's service in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'd like to just read something here from Psalm 105, verse 16. Psalm 105. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He break the whole staff of bread. And then he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came underline that until the time that his word came the word of the lord tried him 
And then the king sent for him and loosed them. Released them into his destiny. Confide, turn around upon his life. The king sent for him and loosed them. Even the ruler of the people and let him go free. He made him lord of his substance, of his house, and ruler of all his substance. To bind the princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Until the time that his word came, he was as ordinary as anybody else. But when his word came, the king sent for him. God's word concerning your translation into glory, your moving from glory to glory, has come. When the president of a greater nation is visiting another nation, you know how they prepare? Now the king of kings has decided to come down to hear you. I mean, he said, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried. And you see, one word from God is all you need to deliver the word that you desire. That's all you need. One word from God is enough to change your entire world. Today is 26th of August, and I'm sure that should ring a bell in some of our ears. 20 years ago, 26th of August, 1987, the Lord said to me, I was in, the, in, in that hotel room in America, he said, arise, get back home and make my people rich. 20 years ago, there was no evidence of a prosperous church. No, it could not be seen or noticed in Africa. Church people were celebrated paupers. Everybody seemed to enjoy it as part of their redemptive package. But 20 years ago, the word sounded from heaven. And you see what it has done to your life. See what it has done to the life of multitudes. You know where you were when Jesus picked you up. You know where you are now by his grace. That is one word from heaven. I see the word for you. The particular word for you. Placed in your hand to change your world. 20 years after, even the great America envies holy joy and celebrate the hand of God in Africa. 20 years after. I know you may look ordinary in the eyes of men, but you are sent for such a time as this. And your portion of the great commission in being a light of the world and the salt of the earth, God will put the key into that realm in your hand. That's a very important night and I'd like you to be sure you do everything to be part of that event. I'll be putting in your hand the same keys that God has put in my hand which has never failed to produce these 26 years. And I see God multiplying that grace. I see him not just duplicating, but multiplying that grace in all areas of your endeavors. And you will be glad you did. Jesus is Lord. Can I hear your loudest amen if you believe that? You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Jesus is Lord. Winning the war against sin, part four, which is the concluding part of this teaching series. Winning the war against sin. Well, it's important for us to reflect again from where we began. The subject of holiness, purity, righteousness is a war. It is what? A war. You heard the story of blessing this morning. He came into God's presence. God arrested them and the devil pulled them back. How many remember that story? And the devil pulled them back and they went wide back again to where he used to be. Until one agent of change came after him. 
I said, blessing, blessing, you must follow me. Blessing, you must follow me. And it took forces in heaven to rescue him back. And can't you see color today? Somebody for 18 years separated from his parents, never knew where the father died, never knew nothing, just was living in another world, a world of destruction, a world of devastation. And Jesus came and dressed him up. But it was war. It was what? It was war. So the subject of sin is not a play fair, it's a warfare. The subject of righteousness is not a play fair, it's a warfare. It's not a thing you confess, it's a thing you must profess. Chapter 7 of Romans, this is what Paul said, verse 19. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil that I will not, that do I, or that I do. Now if I do that which I will not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I will do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. This is the testimony of every genuine convert. You delight in the will of God from your inside. You want to please God. How many agree with that? How many truly want to please God here? Let me see your hands. How many truly desire to please God here? Let me see your hands. Now, Paul said, I truly delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law. And the word law means force. Another force in my members. Warring. Verse 23, warning, underline the word warning. You did that the last time. If it has not turned, just underline it again. Warning <laughs> against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He said, But I thank God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, so with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Where is the answer? There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So you have to engage one law to be free from another. You are either engaging the law of the spirit, capital letter S, or you remain a victim of the law of sin and death. Until you engage the law of upthrust, you remain a victim of the law of gravity. So there has to be one law to cancel out the other. Yeah. This is so important. Now, that narrative also indicates that you don't have power within yourself to overcome sin. Yeah. No one does. So there are provisions in the word of the spirit to make you and I overcome us. And those are the laws we need to take advantage of and engage to be free. I know that this month marks the beginning of your true spiritual liberty. You are going to imagine a surprise to yourself before this year is over. The things that easily flow you will come cheaply under your command. Your taste for unrighteousness will be destroyed finally. So it's a war. That's the thing I wanted to bring out here. I see another law in my members warning, not playing. It's out to destroy. In every war, every side is poised to overcome, to conquer. Every side is poised to conquer. So it's not that you just go and pick your victory. No, you fight your way through to it. It's very important. Now, if it's a war, then we better examine the weapons of our warfare. 
And as we engage those weapons of our warfare, we are sure to have the victory that belongs to us. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? One of the most prominent of the weapons of our warfare is called faith. What is it? Faith. Every victory in the kingdom anchors on this virtue called faith. Faith is the master key to a world of victory in the kingdom of God. First John chapter 5 and verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. First John chapter 5 verse 4. So faith is our guarantee for victory in every battle on earth. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Even our faith. Let's look at this great scripture in Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2, for by it the elders obtained a good report. So faith is the factory of good reports. It is faith that generates good reports. And how many agree with me that purity is good report? Amen. By faith the elders obtained a good report. Now look at what he said in verse 3. Through faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God so that the things which you now see were not made out of things which do appear. So faith is able to give your desired shape. The word was without form and void and faith gave it shape and color. Now by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gift and by it being, he being dead, yes, speaketh. Now listen. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that what? That he pleased God. But without faith, what did he say? It is impossible to please God. So the sanctity, the purity of Enoch is a product of faith in action. Faith was responsible for that level of sanctification. It was a, a strange level of sanctification. He had this testimony that he pleased God, but without faith, it is what? Impossible to please God. It is impossible. So all said and done, until faith is in place, your victory is not sure. Faith is the master key to a word of victory in every battle that a believer faces. Faith. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now in the same chapter, Hebrews 11 and verse 32, and what shall I say more? For time will fail me to tell of Gideon, of Barak, and, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David, also, and Samuel, and of all the prophets, who through faith did what? Subdued kingdoms, and what again? Wrought righteousness. Through what? Through what? They demonstrated righteousness. Samuel stood up and said, whose ox have I taken? Who have I defrauded? Who have I robbed? Testify against me today and they say, you have not robbed any of us. He said, of whom have I taken any bribe? He said, you have not taken bribe from any of us. Had a public testimony. First Samuel chapter 12 verse 3. A public testimony of righteousness. And the Bible says, through faith, they did what? They wrought righteousness. Through faith, they wrought righteousness. Through faith, they wrought righteousness. Never forget that in our course of this, uh, uh, in this series, we tried to point 
out the fact that every evil is an outworking of the devil. There is a spirit involved in every evil that a man engages in. There's a spirit involved. For we rest not against flesh and blood. I'm sure you have that in your Bible. And so the Bible is not just natural. The battle is essentially spiritual. So there are spiritual forces involved. Contending with you. Contending with me. To get God off you and get God off me. And so we need to engage spiritual forces. To quash them. To bring them down. The Bible talks about all that is in the world. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. And it talks about it is that there's a spirit that is working in the children of disobedience. So those things are there. You have those spiritual forces that are unleashed by the devil to bring you down. To make God turn his back on you so he could take advantage of you. So there are spiritual forces. There are spiritual forces involved and so they can only be quenched by a superior spiritual force. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, the word says, Above all, doing what? Taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. All the fiery darts of the devil. Above all, that is, don't undermine the place of this. This is the crux of the matter this is your principal weapon in every spiritual battle above all taking the shield of faith we are in you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil and where are these darts coming from for we wrestle not against flesh and blood verse 12 but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places Th those are the battles those are the spiritual forces that we are confronting and they said above all taking the shield of faith and you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil taking the shield of faith and you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil this is so important Say with me, it is impossible to please God without faith. Because the forces that are against us, it will take a superior spiritual force to silence them, to quench them. And that superior force is called faith. For above all, taking the shield of faith, we are in you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. When the church begins to believe God, for purity, the same way we believe him for total health, there shall be purity in the church. When the church begins to believe him for purity, the same way we believe him for prosperity, there shall be a revolution. Now, you see, you understand what I'm talking about because without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please God. And we understand that this is the true foundation that guarantees your access to all of your other redemptive benefits. Because sin separated man from God initially. And that barrier has to give way for God and man to come back together. And if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So that is where to engage the force of faith before faith will deliver in all other areas of our lives. Without faith, it is impossible. He said, I want to do good, but I see another law working in my members, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin and death. It is that law that I need to deal with. And to deal with that law, I need to engage a superior law of the spirit to bring it down. If you walk after the flesh, he said we shall die. But if we through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, he said we shall live. 
So it's important for us to know that we have to engage the law of the spirit to mortify the deeds of the flesh or we remain victims. And faith is that principal force that must be engaged for any man to truly please God. Let me ask this question one more time. How many truly desire to please God? Amen. Do you really want to please him? Now the Bible said, and without faith, it is impossible. There are certain things you may have wept upon. You have made vows. You have made resolutions. But they keep occurring and reoccurring and reoccurring. And you seem so helplessly helpless. And you wonder is what is happening. I'm telling you what is happening this morning. You are trying to do it in your own power. But the issues involved are essentially spiritual. So your willpower is too weak to deal with it. And any Christian who is not really committed to pleasing God is only having fun. And that fun will end up in a place he wouldn't like to go. Except you are sleeping in church. If they ask, does anybody want to go to hell? Will anybody raise up their hand? But except if you are sleeping. If you are sleeping, you may not know what they say. You just say, raise your hand and then you just put it up. Nobody wants to go to hell. If you ask Blessing, who was a notorious area boy, do you want to go to hell? He said, no, I don't want to go to hell. If you ask him then, there is no normal human being who will see hell and say, I'd like to go there. You, nobody won't want to go there. How much more people come to church every Sunday? They don't want to go to hell. Everybody in his right mind really wants to please God because you want God and you to be together. You want a union with God. You want a companionship with God. And Why is it not happening? Because there are forces stronger than you working against you. But I'm glad to let you know the Bible says this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. This is the victory. And the battles, the battle against sin is only in this world, it's not in heaven. So, and that battle is conquerable by the instrumentality of faith. We must get that straight. In Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, Paul the Apostle was writing here. Now let's start from verse 24. Or verse 23 for all have sinned and come short of what of the glory of god being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in christ jesus whom god has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of god to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay. But by what? By the law of faith. So God's righteousness answers to the law of faith. God's righteousness answers to what? The law of faith. Romans 3, 23 to 27. God's righteousness will always answer to the law of faith. God's righteousness will always answer to the law of faith. God's righteousness will always answer to the law of faith. It is the law of faith that guarantees our access to his righteousness. And through faith, they subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They stopped the mouth of lions. Through faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And he had this testimony that he pleased God, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. This is so important. Faith 
is the master key to a world of righteousness. Faith is the master key to a world of righteousness. Faith is the master key to a world of righteousness. Faith is the master key to a world of righteousness. But how does faith deliver this result? Listen to this very carefully. Every time you believe any aspects of God's word, you provoke the release of his power to confirm it. My Bible says, as many as believed him, what happens? To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Now, that is in John chapter 1, verse 1 to 12. He's talking about the word of God. Every time your faith comes alive on any scripture, you provoke the release of God's power to make it happen. So faith is a spiritual means through which we tap into God's power to actualize what we believe. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And as many as believed him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Paul said in Romans 1 16, I am not ashamed of the word of God, of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Romans 1 16. So what does that mean? It means faith connects you to power, which delivers your de desired victory. Faith connects you to the power of God, which delivers into your hand your desired victory. And never forget, faith is in departments. Faith operates in departments. Faith for healing is required for you to be healed. Now, faith for protection it's a requirement for you to enjoy his protection. Faith for righteousness is required for you to walk in his righteousness. Now listen to this. Without the word of protection, you cannot generate faith for protection. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now without the word of prosperity, you cannot generate faith for prosperity. For faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So it is not faith, except it is word generated. It is fake, except it is word generated. So if we don't settle down on the word of purity, we will never be able to generate faith for purity, and we remain victims of impurity. So faith is not a thing to assume. Faith is a thing to acquire. Faith is not a thing to assume. Faith is a thing to acquire. For instance, faith for church growth comes by having the word of church growth. If you don't have it, it won't grow. You can pray forever, but you need to have the word upon which your faith will come alive and then we provoke release of God's power to grow the church. I shared with you several in several occasions that before we got married, okay, before I came into ministry, I studied a number of biographies, about 39 of them, of strong and great ministries. And from there, my faith began to grow on how to duplicate and multiply some of the graces I saw in those great lives in my own little life. Side by side with scriptures, I was positioned for a triumphant ministry adventure. Now, before we got married, 
I read volumes of literature on marriage, on marriage. Volume and that provoked plenty of questions in my heart on why is this like this? Why is this like this? And answers were coming from scriptures because only those who ask questions are entitled to answers. Now, after all of those things, I came out with seven powerful concepts of marriage that will make it a hit free adventure. And bless God, this month we just celebrated our 25th year anniversary in marriage. Sweet home, home ever to want to return to. Now, 25 solid years of heat free marriage. No one ever has had access to ask a question or settle any scuffle in that place till tomorrow. Now, you see, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I just came back from London and we had a very humbling testimony. A white lady, 20 years waiting on the love of fruit of the womb. How many years? 20 years. And so a friend of hers gave her a book, You Shall Not Be Barren. She settled down and swallowed the book. Last May, she was confirmed pregnant. 20 years, that is all the doctors, all the experts in Europe had given up that the case was closed. 20 years, God visited her. How did that faith come? It came by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's why there is no future for a lazy Christian. There's no future for a lazy Christian. There is no future for a lazy Christian. There is no future for a lazy Christian. So it's not about praying and shaking your head. It's about having the faith to ward off the forces of hell that are out to bring you down. What it takes. It's not a thing to assume. He said, above all, taking. Everybody say taking. Uh, you don't uh, you take assumption. You take a substance. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So you take it. So if you want to work in dominion over sin, then don't be afraid to read books that are against sin and teach you the way out of sin so your faith can come alive and your victory can become a reality. I wanted to see church growth because whatever is not growing cannot be called successful. So I gave myself to reading volumes of materials of Yonggi Cho of South Korea and read and read and read and until certain things began to find their way into my, my system. And it became easy for me because somebody else has done it. You have seen it working so it can work. Friends, you need to wake up. Say with me, faith is not a thing to assume. It's a substance to acquire. Faith is a tangible force and delivers tangible proofs and delivers tangible proofs and delivers tangible proofs. So what faith does is it connects you to the power of God that gives you victory over the things that are stronger than you. Amen. Amen. Look at what Jesus said, for instance. The word of God says, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, what does that mean? If you are confused as to what God's plan for your life is, he said, look at Jesus. Will he be found doing what you are doing? Look at Jesus. Now, you look at him in prosperity, and then you prosper, because he was never a beggar. And it came to you heavily. I am not created to beg. I've been young, now I'm old. The psalmist said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. You look at him in his health and you say, hey, there is no sickness in his body, so there must not be sickness in my body. So look at him in his righteousness. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God by him. So you look at his righteousness and appropriate it the same way you appropriate his, his divine health. And then you walk in it. This is so important. It is my prayer that none of us will end our spiritual journey here, but will be part of the glory there. Yeah. And this is one thing 
that is required. It is the one and only thing that's required for you and I to be part of the glory beyond. There are too many rich people in hell today. Jesus told us his story of the rich fool burning in hell in agony and in thirst. There's no, prosperity does not qualify you for heaven. It is purity that does. Thank God for prosperity. It's part of our fundamental redemptive privileges. But that does not guarantee a place in heaven. Purity is what guarantees it. And if you want to be there, because I know you want to be there, all you need is get up on your feet and make yourself, position yourself to get there by generating the faith for victory over sin as a lifestyle. In Romans chapter 6 verse 14, it says, Sin shall no more have dominion over you. Because you are no longer under the law, but under grace. And under grace, sin has no legal power to have dominion over you. Say with me, sin shall no more have dominion over me. Because I'm no longer under the law, but under grace. We are saying has no final say. Faith has the 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 final say. Under grace, the devil has no final say. God has the final say. Can I hear your amen? amen? Under the law, the devil had the final say because man sold out his dominion to the devil. And Jesus came and restores man's dominion back through the act of redemption. So Satan has no more final say on the issues regarding your life because you are now under grace. Can I hear your amen? Amen. Under grace, sickness has no final say because the price for your total health has been fully paid. Can I hear your amen? amen? In the same way, under grace, sin has no final say because he was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquity. So the price for your total victory over sin has been fully paid. That's where faith comes on. You know what the Bible says in Isaiah 53 and verse 1? Who hath believed our report, and unto whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? When you believe the report of the price for sin that is fully paid, he reveals his hand to confirm it in your life. That's how it works. That's how it works. That's how it works. He became poor that we through his poverty might be made rich. The same way he was made sin for us. Second Corinthians 5 21. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him? So if we believe the prosperity appropriation, we must believe the sanctification appropriation. And the same force that is bringing that prosperity to bear in our lives will bring that same purity to bear in our lives. And I tell you something, when purity and prosperity match, posterity is born. That is generations after you will be swimming in the quality of your work with God. I said when purity and prosperity collide, eh? Posterity is born. He said, Blessed is the man that feareth God and delights himself greatly in his commandments. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. His seed also shall be mighty upon the earth. That's what we read this morning. So it's not just prosperity. When prosperity and purity collide, posterity is born. The generation coming is preserved. That's what I see in your own generation. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. 
Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. That's what makes it happen. So it is your faith that qualifies you to please him. Let me read these two scriptures. I'll be glad to do that. Please, please open your Bibles with me. Second Corinthians. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever cannot be found in Christ shall no more be found in your life. Yeah. The same power that gave him victory is available to you and I this morning. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. Let's read together, everybody. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Praise the Lord. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the same 2 Corinthians, and verse 21. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So you see, it, it, you could see this exchange mystery. He became poor to bring us into his, to his prosperity. He became sane to bring us into his righteousness. It's all by faith. Can I hear your amen? amen? How many have seen the reality of that exchange in the area of prosperity? Let me see your hand. He made them to be sane for us. Who knew no sin? So we might be made the righteousness of God by him. So we are made righteous. Because he took our place. He is our substitute for sin. So we could demonstrate his righteousness in our life. And I think this is very important. We will go places as we give ourselves to this. Please understand that you are confronted by forces. Spiritual forces. Highly determined to disqualify, to disqualify you for God's presence. And you must also take on what he takes to quench them. And what does he take? Faith. He takes faith. He takes faith. If the price has been paid, then it is your legal right to possess the goods. The price for righteousness has been paid. So it is your right and my right to possess the goods of righteousness. When you buy anything from any store, it becomes your legal right to possess it. To take it home. They can't arrest and say, where are you going? I'm going home. I already paid for it. So I'm going home with it. So today I see you going home with his righteousness. Yeah. Why? The price has been fully paid. You know, my Bible said, you have been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are the Lord's. First Corinthians 6.20 you have been bought with a price. So your body must glorify God. Your spirit must glorify God. So your spiritual life must be giving glory to God. The same way your physical life is giving glory to God. I have been bought with a price. The price for my liberty from the dominion of sin has been fully paid. Therefore sin has no more dominion over my life. Can I hear your amen? You believe that? That's what Christ has come to do for us. Our victory is sure in Christ. 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 So faith is generated by revelation. The revelation of the word of God in the area of concern. Also, faith is operated by confession. Say with me, confession. Jesus went by a fig tree and went to check fruits thereon and couldn't find. And Jesus turned and said, no one eat fruit of thee from this time forever. Mark chapter 11 and verse 21. 
And on the following morning, they were passing, and they saw that the tree had withered. And Peter said, Master, the fig tree with thou causes is withered away. And Jesus said, Have faith in God. For whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast to the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Look at what Peter said. Behold, the fig tree without causes is withered away. Verse 21. Did you see that? The fig tree without causes is withered away. Whatever mocks you is entitled to a cause. So every habit that mocks your Christianity is entitled to a cause. And Jesus caused that tree. So no one eats fruit of thee from this time, even forever. And Peter said, the victory without causes is withered away. And Jesus said, that is faith in action. <laughs> that is the operation of faith at work. The same way if you will say to this mountain, that mountain that is tearing you in the face, determined to disqualify you for heaven and disqualify you for divine presence and rob you of your inheritance in Christ, that mountain that says no way. So if you will say to that mountain, the same way I caused this tree, if you cause the mountain that is standing on your way, the same way I caused this tree, and you shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that what you say will come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. So I'd like you to get ready today. Whatever habit that is standing on your way saying that there is no way out, I will hold you captive forever. You are going to cause those habits and they will dry up from the roots. Yeah. How many are hearing what I'm talking about here today? Everything that is eating you like cancer Every habit you know displeases God, but you are still there. And you have struggled and struggled and it won't go. My God is saying, that is a mountain that's entitled to a cause. And I want you to cause it from the depth of your heart today. You know, you see, this is just like sickness has no respect for age. No, that now you are old, you can't have fever again. No, no, no. Sickness has no respect for age, so sin has no respect for status. I'd like you to determine what I'm thinking right now. One, two, three things that must be caused. We met a woman on this trip, and this woman said for 12 years she was believing God for fruit of the womb. And at 1991, I visited their city in uh, Weary. And they just invited her that day, and I said, Write whatever you desire from the law right now. And she wrote, and I said, If you are looking for children, write the names of the children. And she did. Twins, the two grown-up boys were standing by her. So whatever you document today to be decimated, to be destroyed, you shall never see them again in your life. That is how the law of faith operates. It operates by causing the things that mock you. The things that stand on your way and say to you there is no way out. You cost them off your way, you can have a thorough fear to glory. You're having that this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. And then the third way this faith operates is by prayers. Therefore I say unto you, verse 24 of the same Mark 11, What thing soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. So, you operate the law of faith on the altar of prayer. Whatever you desire. Lord, I want to please you. But this one thing, and this second one, and this third one, they have been holding me captive. I believe you today for liberty. Destroy my taste for this. Destroy my affection for this. 
and set me free like you have promised. He said, when ye pray, not before you pray. When ye pray, not if you pray. When ye pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. How many want true freedom here? Amen. Listen to me. What will happen in your life between now and the end of the year, if you will correctly position yourself with God in the school of sanctification, you will be surprised at yourself. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. You will be surprised at yourself. You know what Job's wife said? Are you still holding on to your integrity? Curse God and die. How many remember that story? And Job said, shut up. I would rather sink with God than shine without him. Job stood firm with God and God turned the captivity of Job. You don't have to go crooked for your captivity to be torn. <laughs> Just go straight with God and when he steps in, every devil in hell will know that God has stepped in. I don't know what you may have suffered before. But you have just you are about just entering your season of total enviable restoration in the name of Jesus. So you engage the law of declarations. So confession is not just saying what God says, is saying what God says against what the devil is doing. Goliath came and cursed David in the name of his God, and David stood up and cursed him in the name of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the superior cause swallowed up the lower one. Whatever they may have placed on your life that makes your marriage impossible, huh? that makes fighting and strife unending, it's going off for you today in the name of Jesus. Whatever may have been placed on your children that make them wayward, and lost yet not dead. You can't locate them. You can't see them. Things are working upside down for them. The devil is celebrating that he's taking them away from you. But today as you rise up to cause the workings of the devil around your life, there shall be restoration. Yeah. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. And finally... In James chapter 2, how does faith deliver this result? Verse 14, what does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and des destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, depart in peace, and be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give him not those things which are needful to, his, to the body, what does he profit? Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And what happens? And I will show you my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, Thou doest well, the devils also believe and tremble. But without not without no, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his own son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Amen. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for what? For righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. He was called what? The friend of God. Faith is not just believing God. Faith is taking God at his word. Faith is acting on God's word. Faith is what? Acting on God's word. Faith is acting on God's word. Faith is acting on God's word. And it's so important for us to know. The Bible said, give no place to the devil. The devil is seeking opportunity. So block every opportunity that the enemy has been taking advantage of in your life. 
Ephesians 4 27 give no place to the devil now Paul was writing in 1st Timothy chapter 6 writing to Timothy said flee also youthful loss what do you do you flee you don't hang around it you flee from it flee also youthful loss so you flee from it it is action that perfects the operation of your faith a wise man foresees the evil and hides himself but the foolish pass on and they are punished therefore be sober and be vigilant don't be careless be sober be vigilant for your advice the devil he roars about like a lion seeking whom he may devour first timothy chapter 5 and verse 8 to 10 i mean first peter sorry first peter 5 5 i mean 8 to 10 so you flee you flee you don't create opportunity for the enemy you don't allow him to have his way around your life and then you are ready to walk in his righteousness and please him can i hear your amen, amen. let me hear your amen. amen let me hear your amen, amen. it's time to act on god's word it's time to act on god's word i don't know this morning if there are certain challenges in your life that have refused to surrender to your will to your desire to your craving they must bow today to the authority of faith they must bow today to the authority of faith if you believe that let me hear your loudest amen they must bow today to the authority of faith they must bow today to the authority of faith Amen. say with me the price for righteousness has been fully paid sin shall no more have dominion over my life sin shall no more have dominion over my life i'm no longer under the law I am now under grace where faith has the final say where faith has the final say my liberty is sure today whatever I don't want must give way because I'm under grace whatever I cost today must dry up from the roots in the name of Jesus hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ may I please request that whatever you really want cost as an unwanted habit around your life just between you and God take a little piece of paper we are going to place it on this ground and as the Lord live it with your faith you are not going to see them again yeah. that secret pride that is upturning everything in your home the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life the spirit of wardom the spirit of immorality that is tormenting your life as the Lord live it today marks the end of it the spirit of covetousness that makes you look after things that are not your own imagine if this crowd of people today truly represent Christ in our great nation what a revolution that will be if every public office holder is operating the fear of God if every corporate executive is operating the fear of God imagine what that will be if only this crowd of Nigerians are positioned in God to represent Christ bodily in their respective places imagine if the men and women in this commission alone across the nations of the earth will stand for God like they, like Daniel like Joseph like Nehemiah like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego what that will be 
to the nations of the world. The change we are waiting for in Nigeria must begin with us. It must begin with us. When salt has lost its savor, there is no way it can add taste to anything. It has to begin with us. The wiping out of corruption in the land must begin from church people in various public offices. We are there. God sent one righteous man and the entire destiny of Israel was preserved. You are that Joseph that God is waiting for. So whatever is trying to make you lose your place in destiny, today is that day when it must go up. Now may I also ask, your spiritual potency that is under arrest, prayer, no prayer, study, no study, just wake up in the morning, woo, come back in the evening, woo, like a wood. The devil just sitting and saying, no way I won't let you have a walk with God. You, you, don't, you won't have no walk with God. Just come to church on Sunday, just show up, sit down in your regular seat and then go back home. And then I can deal with you all through the week. Lord, I need a revival in my life. I need a revival that will keep me on top and above the, the storms. I want you to, whatever is not allowing you to fully manifest your sonship in Christ, this is the hour. Can I hear your amen? And watch what happens today. Every day will be to you a brand new day. Please know, there are forces responsible. And these forces must bow to the authority of faith. Above all, taking the sheet of faith, we are need to be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. Satan, you lost the battle today. You lost the battle over these multitudes today. Everyone here, as the Lord liveth, the remaining days of your life, you will live to please him. No one under the sound of my voice today will miss his place in heaven. And your inheritance on now shall not be robbed you in the name of Jesus. Some children came on the way and began mocking the man Elisha. And Elisha turned back and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And two sheep beards came out of the wood and destroyed them. Whatever you cause today shall be destroyed. Put those papers down on this breakthrough ground. And I'd like you to put one of your legs on it. And as the law liveth, whatever you have written, I'd like you to now use your own mouth. My Bible said, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. But every tongue that is not against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Begin to cause those spirits in the name of Jesus. Barida clerida berida yeshanda wate borote se geretize yoto clorida pekereta se nikere de ziga yeshanda parote zike retosia yato prekene corida barateze hola prekene te zikeria yeshanda ke ruda baratize kene te zi aroba yeto barane ke reto bara ete koli yarate kalita selopra. Ya te ke te kute broke nete zila bra Yo shada kle ride lute rude bo Arabe ke te ze kule broke nate Ya she di ke rida reto be rida Ya she di ke ride poro tu se reke teno A de ke rede sigarada broke te ne borua Ya shada kato be ke te rute se In the name of Jesus Repto break the nepo rute sine prok the nepo ria Yasha deko rita bareta ke rete si Yeto break e tiza rute ke no pare dale Yasho di ke rote po rita se neto pe Yeta gara tu se gero pare date ko Yeto break e rita se lo pare daye tano Yato ke ro bere ke to zira bere te ko Yesha da ke rida proke nete zira poria Yashe da klaria le tizezo Yeto preke nete sigarata silo Bratise gloria ye 
Yashadakarite Senekeno. Thank you, Lord. We take retos. We credit letezi. Wari se clori be yetezi zoro. Adeko tizerita prade. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. God said, I will bless him that blesses you, and him that causes you, I will cause. So I'd like you to do this one moment. Cause those things in the name of the Lord. Because God said, whatever is out to cause you, I will cause. These forces are out to rob you of God's blessings, so they're entitled to God's causes. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus, I curse you in the name of the Lord. Every vice, every evil vices of the wicked one that is out against the destiny of the saints of God. Every sin of unforgiveness, every sin of bitterness and hatred in the name of Jesus. Lord, I cause these vices in the name of the Lord. Every sin of sexual immorality, I cause this in the name of the Lord. Every sin of pride, I cause in the name of the Lord. Every sin of spiritual laxity, I cause in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, every vices of the wicked one that is arrayed against the people of God, I cause you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Jesus took the place of Barabbas. And Barabbas became a free man. How many remember the story? He was to die. Jesus died his death. <laughs> and the wages of sin is death. So Jesus died for you and me to live. Therefore, sin is caused from its roots in your life in the name of Jesus. Every test for sin and unrighteousness is destroyed in the name of Jesus. All the forces that are moving you to displease God. They come under the curse of the Lord today in the name of Jesus. I decree spiritual revival in everyone's life in the name of Jesus. I decree the continuous burning of the purifier's fire in the name of Jesus. The spirit of the world that works the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life is cursed in the name of Jesus. The spirit of wardom, sexual immorality, is cursed in the name of Jesus. The spirit of corruption that is destroying the destiny of our nation is destroyed today in the name of Jesus. Receive the anointing of Joseph to stand tall for God in your various places of work in the name of Jesus. Receive the grace after the order of Daniel, Shedlak, Meshach, and Abednego, who will refuse to bow to the evils of the hour in your various places in the name of Jesus. Receive the humility of Sarah 
every woman here in your various married homes in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Receive the love and care for your spouses, every husband here in the name of Jesus. Whatever is targeted at destroying any home is caused to them in the name of Jesus. Whatever is targeted at destroying your children's destiny, they are caused to them in the name of Jesus. This day is declared your day of liberty. This day is declared your day of victory. For this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. You are loose in the name of Jesus. Come on, give Jesus a big hand of victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, go forth, be sober, be vigilant, and give no more place to the devil in your life. Let me tell you what's happening. Beginning from now, watch out for massive changes in our nation. For Joseph's sake, God prosper the house of Potiphar. For your sake, God will give Nigeria a new name. Grace never to join them to do their Nigerian evils is your portion today in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Lift up those two hands, everybody. Would you give him thanks one moment for the encounter of today? In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Now go in peace. Experience is covering as you go. No evil report is permitted from your side. This week is declared a week of testimonies for you. Every closed door is reopening for you this week. This week, your fellowship with God will be the richest you have ever experienced. All of your prayers to heaven this week shall receive answers from the Lord. One man stood there and rescued blessing from the pit of hell. This week, somebody is waiting for you to call him. Anyone you say come to, we obey you. Reach out to someone in the garage. Reach out to someone in your neighborhood who is suffering under the plague of the wicked one. And tell him, come over. Jesus is decorating destinies here. Anyone you call forth will come along with you. This is your week of testimonies. Shall we together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship? Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. Bishop David Oyedikpo has just placed in your hands the key to all-round victory, exploits, success, and unquestionable dominion over all life's challenges. The end has come to all your struggles in Jesus' name. Please share your testimony with us. Write Bishop David Oyedikpo, 216 Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria. Or call 817-9670, 817-9671, 817-9671.